Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending this presentation and welcome. My name is Tigran Mikoyan and today I will present a presentation about the SmartX and the SmartX Alpha Demonstrator together with my colleagues. This presentation is called the integration of active morphing technology with smart morphing wing concept for simultaneous in-flight performance optimization, load alleviation and flight dynamic control. Before we dive in into the presentation, let's look at an example from nature. In this picture, we see the wandering albatross, which is also called New Zealand albatross, found in the New Zealand waters in the Pacific Ocean. What is strange about this bird? When we take a closer look, we can notice that this large bird with its 3 meter span has a very tiny tail, yet it can soar for hours in windy conditions in search of food and control its flights to such precision that it can skim the surface of the ocean with the tip of its wing. Normally, birds heavily make use of their tail for lateral stability. This bird removes the need for a big tail and instead makes use of a very flexible wings and wingtips to provide lateral stability. Its wings are maximized in size for soaring and gliding conditions, but yet adaptive and flexible to be used in other flight conditions when necessary. Now, why the story about the birds? That is because aircraft wings are generally designed for a predefined shape, maximized for a single flight condition of the flight envelope, such as cruise, for example. While efficient at cruise, this shape may be suboptimal for other phases of flight. What we would want instead is to actively morph the shape and adapt to any flight condition actively. This can help reduce the weight of the structure and or most optimally make use of the aircraft structure, reducing the fuel consumption. There is already a trend towards more flexible configurations. On the left, we see an example from NASA and Flexis that developed this morphing wingtip device. On the right, we see an example from NASA Ames, which developed the VCTF concept with this flexible continuous camber morphing. Typical applications for such flexible morphing configurations currently are drones. We see here a very nice example from NASA Ames, which is a cellular morphing wing concept built with cellular building blocks demonstrating twist morphing. Bottom left, the famous Hill aircraft, which suffered from its flexibility. Many other companies currently develop drone configurations. However, it's not only limited to aircraft, as morphing technology is also used in high-performance cars and advanced spoiler designs. However, we have to go beyond. Towards an autonomous, continuously self-optimizing wing for the greening of aviation. Our attempt towards green aviation is with advancements of active morphing. And that brings us to the project that I will present today, which is the SmartX. The goal of this project is to advance active morphing technology for greener aviation with smart autonomous morphing wing concept. The morphing technology is developed in the early stages of the design, such that the integration of various disciplines is closely coupled. And the main research question that we aim to answer is how to use multidisciplinary integration of novel control laws, sensing methods and actuation mechanisms for real-time in-flight multi-objective optimization of actively morphing wing. The core of the morphing concept is to ensure real-time optimization of objectives such as drag minimization, load alleviation, aeroelastic control and shape control, with smart integration of sensing, material and actuation. The main contribution of SmartX 
is to demonstrate this with a distributed morphing concept. SmartX is a multidisciplinary collaboration between three PhDs that form the core of the project team. These three PhDs contribute to three technology streams. There is a development stream in smart sensing and structural health monitoring, as you can see on the left. Also, smart piezoelectric actuation and sensing is investigated. My own study is mainly focused on the morphing design, optimization and integration framework. And finally, the implementation of novel active control methodology for autonomous smart morphing wing. Now let's look at a bird's eye overview of the rationale behind the SmartX wing. At the core, we have the real-time optimization objectives that govern the actions of the smart controller. The controller delegates the control actions by manipulating and morphing the control surfaces of the wing. It does that such that we tailor the most optimal lift distribution required for these multiple objectives. By doing so, the controller uses knowledge of smart sensors installed in the wing, embedded in the wing, and estimates the responses of the wing under presence of, for example, gusts and turbulence. This autonomous wing is now realized and it's called the SmartX Alpha. It is the first prototype of this project, demonstrating distributed active morphing technology. We have recently completed a five-week wind tunnel test campaign, but more on that later. First, what is actually the SmartX Alpha? How does it look like? This is a snapshot of our hardware demonstrator in full glory. As you can see, each independent section of this morphing wing is independently able to morph. Now, what is the SmartX about? What are its building blocks? Let me give you an overview of the technologies. The core of the SmartX is the morphing concept based on distributed trick modules, which allow seamless distributed morphing. We have six in total. We have also quite a bit of sensing technology on board. We implement novel piezoelectric sensors to monitor the flow conditions on the morphing skin. Piezoelectric actuators for turbulence and gust encounters. Fiber optic sensors which are integrated in the wing for passive load monitoring. Also novel visual tracking methods, real-time strain gauges and sensor fusion are implemented to allow robustness against sensor failures. The sensor information is used with robust control loss in gust and maneuver load alleviation in real-time distributed data sharing architecture. Now, let's look at morphing design and manufacturing. The core of the morphing wing design is based on the TRIC concept, which stands for Translation-Induced Camber. The underlying idea of TRIC is to implement a combination of warping and skin bending to allow for both camber and twist morphing. By introducing a cut in the bottom skin, in our case the flexible trailing edge, the skin is allowed to translate in the cordwise direction. By applying symmetric or asymmetric force, bend down, up and twist morphing can be commanded with two pairs of actuators. The benefit of this concept is that the internal stresses in the skin are reduced. We have a linear twist distribution which requires low actuation forces and allows conventional actuators to be installed. As a result, we have more room for other primary and auxiliary components in the wing, and we reduce the weight. We have taken the trick concept further and introduced a distributed trick concept with six modules, where each module can be commanded locally along the span with both twist and symmetric motion, 
with 12 actuators. Making the modules distributed brings another challenge, and that is how to ensure continuity between each module. We have done this by investigating an elastomer design which allows the flexibility but does not compromise the aerodynamic performance. Various concepts were investigated and numerical studies were performed. Here you see an example in the early stages of the design. And here you see the final configuration which we have chosen, demonstrating the full morphing capability in this testbed setup. Now briefly about the manufacturing process. The wing is a full composite wing built with fiberglass weave laminate oriented in 45 degrees in a wet layup. To achieve the flexibility and the rigidity to sustain the aerodynamic loads, we have developed an FSI analysis tool and optimized the laminate design with gradual ply drops towards the trailing edge tip. There, you can see how the layers are gradually dropped from 14 to 2. By far, the main challenge was to integrate the sensors and actuators and the myriad of wires scattered across various compartments in the two halves of the wing. And eventually, the final challenge was to bring these together. And to do this, we had to learn and improvise on the spot to perfect the design as we went through. The wing also contains newly developed piezoelectric stall sensors and actuators. The piezoelectric flow sensors themselves are composed of small piezoelectric biomorphs located under the skin of the airfoil. As you can see in the figure on the left, the tip of these biomorphs is attached to a vein piercing the skin which will probe the boundary layer. The idea is that they will detect oscillations occurring in the boundary layer, of which the amplitude should peak near the laminar to turbulent transition. As was already shown on the other research shown in the top right. In the total, there are two rows of eight of these sensors located in the wing to get both cordwise and spanwise distribution. On the lower right, you see a picture of how the veins pierce the skin of the airfoil. The gray part surrounding the vein is part of the box housing the piezoelectric bimorphs under the skin. Using the flow sensors, we already tried to locate transition on the wing. Here you see a graph giving the location of the transition obtained from X-foil, with the locations of the transition on the vertical axis and the angle of attack alpha on the horizontal axis. We found a very close match between the two rows of eight sensors and also with data obtained from X-Foil. The minor differences between the sensors of section two and section five could be due to the fact that section two is closer to the root of the wing, which is near a wall, while section five is closer to the tip of the wing, making up for 3D effect, aerodynamically speaking. Another feature of the wing are the piezoelectric biomorph actuators located along the trailing edge of the wing. In the picture on the right, you see multiple of these biomorphs encircled. Since piezoelectric material itself deforms when an electric field is applied, this can both act as an actuator and deflecting surface at the same time, making them very space efficient. Another benefit is the fast response time, in this setup kept at about 25 Hz. A drawback is, however, is the limited range of deflection they can deliver, which is only a couple of millimeters peak to peak. This deflection is even less with aerodynamic loads are applied, which is visualized in the graph you see in the bottom left. For instance, when about 0.4 newtons of aerodynamic load is applied to one bimorph, its deflection will drop to nearly zero. However, on the wing there are a total of 190 piezoelectric bimorphs, which therefore should allow an aerodynamic load distributed over the bimorphs of about 80 newtons. Their exact aerodynamic impact is yet to be tested. We have also implemented fiber optic shape sensing. 
The sensing technology developed here is based on a novel algorithm for integrating fiber bread grating sensors. The figure on the left shows the principle of a typical grating sensor where local strain is measured. On the right, a Fabry Perot where the strain along the line is measured with the help of a two partially reflecting mirrors. The mirrors in this case are gratings themselves. So the algorithm uses a method of incorporating both hybrid interferometry and fiber break grating spectral sensing. An example of fiber placement is shown on the top left figure that depicts the lower surface of the wing. The red line you see there is the fiber that runs through the surface and connects to the fiber hub. We have in total two fibers, fiber optic sensors installed in the wing, in the top and in the bottom of each module. And we also have fibers installed in a spanwise direction. The crux of the morphing design integration is to combine various technology streams into controller responsible for active morphing. For elastic state feedback, visual tracking and sensor fusion plays a key role. Visual tracking is of particular importance for flexible, lightweight and morphing aircraft structures, as these exhibit higher dynamic responses to external disturbances. In the scope of this project, a novel tracking method was developed based on high-speed generalized correlation filter coupled with augmented extended common filter. You see here a demonstration of the tracking of active lead markers attached on a flexible wind undergoing gust excitations in the wind tunnel. The AAKF, the orange block, allows to learn the system dynamics, which in turn allows to predict and estimate the responses under uncertainties, such as occlusions in the image. This can happen when the image is momentarily blocked and the marker becomes invisible. With a pure KCF tracker, we would lose the estimation, but with the augmented extended common filter, we can overcome this and add robustness. The tracking can go as high as 140 frames per second in the current setup and provide real-time elastic shape feedback. In our current design, we have improved the concept that I shown you earlier and we have a fully integrated active LED markers which do not compromise the airflow. This is possible with a see-through fiberglass body. You can see that demonstrated in the bottom. You also see the full morphing capability of the wing, demonstrating the independent active morphing. To guarantee that a given commanded shape is reached, we need a closed loop feedback from visual tracking. But we can also fuse this information with sensors embedded in the wing, like the strain gauges. And in our wing, we have implemented two strain gauges in each module. We have compared two control methods in our wing. First, linear quadratic Gaussian control. This is a classical model-based control method. It is a well-proven method belonging to a class of optimal control methods. However, it requires significant tuning of the common filter model and the control parameters in order to have a good performance. Secondly, and more interestingly, we use a class of nonlinear, incremental and robust control methods. The INDI, which stands for Incremental Nonlinear Dynamic Inversion, is a novel sensor-based control approach which can show great robustness against model uncertainties and external disturbances. The core of this method is incremental sensor feedback, which can replace a part of the model information with sensor measurements. For those that are familiar with this state space formulation, it's the A matrix in a state space model. Furthermore, our over-sensored approach allows to make use of sensor fusion with additional sensor robustness and redundancy. Additionally, we investigate completely model-free control methods such as reinforcement learning, which belong to a class of artificial intelligence and learning-based control approaches. The benefit of these methods is that they can be completely model-free and adaptive. Finally, I would like to show the capability of our morphing wing and with this image we show the snake which 
commands each adjacent actuator with a certain phase delay to generate a smooth snake-like motion. With our morphing capabilities, in practice, we can generate any given shape achievable within the actuator limits. Now I would like to show you some results and footages performed during our five-week wind tunnel test campaign performed at the ODF OpenJet facility at the Delft University of Technology. Here I would like to show you the result of the gust load alleviation control. In the experiment we have introduced sequences of gusts hitting the wing on top of a free stream velocity of 15 meters per second. The task of the controller was to minimize the root bending moment, so the middle plot and the force in the y direction, the top plot, while keeping the drag minimal. The gust sequences were followed by short intervals corresponding to the blue peaks you see on the top plot. The blue shows the open loop response and the orange shows the INDI control approach together with the quadratic programming which was responsible for the allocation of these multiple actuators. The bottom plot shows the commanded control inputs of 12 actuators. In the table on the right we can see the performance of the controller for various frequencies. We can see that the CUS controller can successfully reduce the additional loads caused by the gust with 75 up to 36% for 0.5 and 1 frequency gusts compared to the open loop case. The performance reduces for higher gust frequencies, but this is purely the limitation of the actuator dynamics. With faster actuators, even better performance can be obtained for gust load alleviation. Additionally, our control approach showed to be fault tolerant as one of the actuators, which is the actuator number 9 in the fourth module, was completely disabled during the experiment. The reason was that the component holding the actuator mechanism came loose due to the bad bond between the skin and the component. To get a better idea, let me show you footage of the gust load alleviation performed in the OGF wind tunnel. You see here the gust generator generating a gust at a 50 meter per second with the two yellow gust vanes and the wing responding to it a short moment after. This is because it takes a bit for the gust to arrive at the wing and the wing takes sensor measurement reading of the load balance attached to the root of the wing measuring the linear forces and moments as we shown earlier. It then immediately takes action upon this. Finally, let's see a full demonstration of the active morphing. We see here the snake pattern performed by the controller. You can see how each of the six sections can be independently morphed to produce our desired target shape. Furthermore, we see how each adjacent module can be commanded in a smooth manner to provide a un unified motion sequence. The elastomer design allows to attain the flexibility needed for the dynamic motion condition while not compromising the aerodynamic performance of the wing. Finally, we can see how on top of the active morphing, we have the fast piezoelectric taps acting on top of it. The clicking sound you hear is made by these piezoelectric actuators actuating at a much higher frequency on top of this morphing motion. They can help to reduce the loads induced by frequency, high frequency turbulence hitting the wing. The influence of these actuators are still being investigated in our current and future studies. Concluding, we have seen active morphing design with multidisciplinary 
state-of-the-art technology development. We have seen that morphing design is challenging in terms of design and manufacturing. We have seen piezoelectric materials that are suitable for novel sensor and actuator designs. We have seen fiber optic sensing methods for novel morphing structures. Also, we have seen how control and real-time feedback of morphing deflections is needed for morphing control. And then finally, we have seen how incremental and robust control methods are suitable for over-actuated systems like ours. To conclude, let's use the runway analogy. In our project, we have started with the sizing of the wing. Then we have performed numerical studies to arrive at the design constraints. Then we have developed a distributed discrete trailing edge over-actuated concept to, to investigate the benefit of morphing design. Continuing, we have designed a fully distributed active trailing edge morphing concept with the SmartX Alpha. Our goal is to contribute to green aviation and develop a full leading and trailing edge morphing concept able to soar the skies like the seabird we have seen earlier. For those interested to follow and learn more about our project, have a look at our promo and teaser videos explaining the technology behind the SmartX Alpha and the wind tunnel activities. Our demonstrator has recently won the first place at the best hardware competition of the ASMA SMASIS conference on smart materials, adaptive structures and intelligent systems. Our paper explaining the design of the wing was also the runner-up in the best paper competition. The paper will become available shortly at the conference proceedings of SMASIS. I would like to thank you for listening to this presentation and I hope you enjoyed.